Watch me ride. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Metalworks. As I left off in the last video, I have a drill press to put together. Uh, I've been dying to do this, so I just want to get on and get it done. Let's see what comes in it. This was like 80 quid. Um, there's a various few versions and different brands that do one for about that price. And, you know, they're not high precision drill presses. You know, you can't be drilling through inches and inches and inches of steel. But for general use at home, to have a drill that holds itself in place, it's absolutely fine. So. We've got the base, we've got the table, there's a guard, bolts and things appear to be for the actual handle of pulling them down of the drill press. I imagine that's going to be the chuck, which it is. Obviously the, uh, the shaft that it mounts on. And the machine itself. I guess uh, I'll actually do the thing of looking at the instruction manual. I'm pretty sure we can work this out, but it's always good to have a look. Well, the instructions are pretty straightforward. Not a lot to it, apparently. So, I don't imagine this is going to take very long. All this cheap equipment, you know, that you buy, that's obviously made in places like India or, or China or somewhere like that, it always comes with this film of grease. The what was the worst one? The vice was vile. I mean, it's good because they obviously, they, you know, you know it's going to get shipped. They don't want it to rust or anything like that, so they cover it in this stuff. But it's vile. Right, just got those started in the threads. This looks like a 14 mil to me. It's very dangerous doing that bit on camera, isn't it? The oh yeah, I can I can tell the sizes. Generally, I can. But, you know, imagine if she's a spanner because they haven't given enough room between this wall and this nut to get a, a socket in there. It's like one of the things that you wouldn't get on a more expensive machine. They'd actually think that one through. But oh well, we have spanners. I did look into buying a second-hand drill press rather than one of these cheap new ones. Um, but actually, going through eBay, your problem is they're so heavy that uh, most people will only be selling them as collection only. And the ones that are offering to post it are charging a stupid amount. Uh, which I understand because I have to send stuff through the post and it is super expensive. And they don't, people, you know, individuals don't have the infrastructure these big companies have that can get you stuff delivered nice and cheaply. Uh, number two, put the table on. What, what is that? What, what is that sticker for? I mean, for real. It's got measurements on it, it's got degrees on it. And, uh, yeah, that's just a waste of time. Oh, this shows the cheapness. See that pin this side? Misaligned and actually almost sticking out the top. I suspect this is going to snap off before too long. Well, I'll probably uh, just drill and stick a pin through it or something so I can just use it as a different type of handle. Here's the chuck, and as you can see, it's got that gunky horribleness all over it. So I'm going to just clean that up. There we go. Yeah, a little drop of acetone. It's coming straight off. It's, again, that horrible grease. All oh, this chuck is. Eh, it's it's okay. It's not a not high quality, but it, it'll do the job. I hope. This is belt driven, so you adjust the speed it runs at by changing the position of the belts on the pulleys. Presumably, that will be how this one works. Indeed it is. So this will do 580 to 2650 RPM. Absolutely no written instructions on as to how this chuck goes on. It appears to just be a taper, which I assume means it just gets forced on, basically. <laughs> Having the right tool at the right time is really important. Um, even if it is a cheap one, it's better than not having it. Uh, another thing is, yes, you should, you could spend more money into individual um, tools, but when you've got a lot of stuff, like I had to buy a load of stuff in one go, it is kind of worth saving a bit. Now let's just see if it works and how noisy it is. I just spent a couple of minutes trying to work out why it wasn't turning on and then saw there is a switch here which gets pressed when the lid's down so you have to close the lid for it to work. Duh! 
here's a quick close look, because I didn't do this. So here's the pulleys inside. You uh, have to loosen off these nuts just a little bit. And then you've got this tensioner here um, to change it, to change it up and down. And that's what your different speeds are. So that was that switch I referred to. And on the front you've got this depth gauge. Just you know, it's not brilliant, but it's, it's all right. Uh, the guards that pops up. See the on and off button. Okay, so next is the vice, which is just a little vice table. And then that just doesn't fit. It was sold together on Amazon as a suggested product to buy together. Well, they don't work together, Amazon. Good work. Yes. That's going to make cleaning up the plates a lot easier because they're not going to have all that sort of blowout. Okay, well that's where I'm going to leave today's video. Uh, I'm glad that I've got the press sorted out. Um, I know what's going on with the vice, so when those plates turn up. But for now I'm going to have a bit of a clear up, get everything straight and tidy in here, and then tomorrow I can start getting on finishing some more clocks that I'm sort of halfway through. And yeah, it'll be good. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and all the things that you do to support this channel. I really appreciate if you watch these metalwork videos, because if you're actually watching this far through the video, you're probably less than 100 people in group. So anyway, bye-bye.